Today, we're going to talk about a new arrival in the Intel processor family. On Tuesday morning, Intel announced the Intel i9 processor family, which are insane to say the least. They start around $2,000 and have anywhere from about 10 to 18 cores. And they are made from HCC silicone, which I don't know what that really means actually, but I thought, I thought it'd be good to throw it out there. These are going to replace the last generation Broadwell E processors, the ones that are made for the high end performance and things that are above gaming. Uh, these things are insane. 12 cores um, from, eight, from 10 to 18 cores, all processors of hyper threading. And you're looking at around the three point, uh, four point three to four point five gigahertz range, um, with the lowest being a three point three, and the highest being a four or four point five. So I'm looking at the graph as I'm talking here. Um, these are going to start around. Uh, these ones specifically are going to start around a thousand dollars, and that is the Intel Core i9 7900X. So it has a base clock of three point three, a turbo clock of four point three, and a turbo max clock of four point five. Now this is gonna, like I said, it's gonna start around a thousand dollars. TDP is gonna be 140 watts, and it's gonna use DDR4 2666 with four memory channels and up to 44 PCIe lanes, which is just crazy. Uh, a little bit over 13 megabytes of cache, almost 14, and either 10 or 20 cores, or sorry, 10 cores, 20 threads. Um, this thing is gonna be crazy. This is for something that's way above gaming, like very very about like editing 8k video above gaming uh these things are crazy now the one i want to talk about a little bit more is the core i9 or core i9 7920x which is has 12 cores and 24 threads we don't know what the base turbo or turbo max clock is and we don't know what the cache is but it's likely going to be the same as the uh, as the 7900 100x uh which is 3 13.1 uh point seven five sorry um, the PCI leans is probably going to be 44.2 because you don't really need more than that in this day. Um, that's a lot and it's likely going to be 44, but for some reason it could be just way higher if we really wanted it to be. Uh, memory frequency is still to be determined and it could be higher because of those extra cores, but we don't really know yet. And the TDP is also to be determined and if they can keep this into 140 watts, I'm going to be surprised because 12 cores and 24 threads is just insane. That one is going to be about $1,200. Now, along with the i9s, they announced two new processors in the i7 family, the Core i7-7800X and the Core i7-7820X. Now, both of these we have awesome numbers on. So, the 7800X is actually very similar to the 6700K, which is a great processor. And I say that because it's very, uh, not necessarily a cookie cutter, but it's actually just not pushing the boundaries too much. It's just a really good processor for what we have today. It has six cores and 12 threads, a base clock of 3.5, a turbo clock of 4.0, and there's no turbo max clock like there are in the other processors. It has a uh, cache of 8.25 8 megabytes, and it can support up to 28 PCIe lanes. The memory frequency is going to be DDR4-2400, and it's going to be about 140 watts. Now, the price is where it gets, is where it gets good. $389 for this awesome processor, which is not crazy out of the park. Uh, this is going to be the best processor for gaming, uh, high resolutions, or just doing a whole lot of intensive stuff when you're playing games, you know, video editing, recording, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's going to be the one that's one step ahead of the gaming crowd. It's going to be one tier above, and if you want to do gaming and photo editing or game, gaming and video editing or whatever, this is going to be the processor to get because it's just above where you need it to be to play games at the max and max resolutions or your max resolution, the high resolutions, whatever. Now, the Core i7-7820X is the second one that was talked about today, and this one has 8 cores and 16 threads, uh, with a base clock of 3.6, a turbo clock of 4.3, uh, and a turbo max clock of 4.5. The cache is 11 megabytes, and it also supports 28 PCIe lanes, up to 4 memory channels like they all do, and this one is the one that, that needs DDR4-2666, so it's a little bit more... Uh, higher end than the previous i7 that we just talked about. It's still going to sit around 140 watts, and the price for this one is just a little bit more out of the ball out of the ballpark. 600 bucks 
for one processor. Now, 600 bucks for one processor is crazy. Some people build PCs for 600 bucks. I built my first PC for 500 bucks. So to spend more than a regular PC on just one processor sounds a little bit crazy, but the enthusiast people will love this because you can do everything with this Core i7, I promise you. Now, we haven't seen benchmarks or anything, but I promise you this, this processor is gonna be absolutely amazing. Both of these are, and the fact that they're in the i7 family is actually very interesting because the KB like did not do so well, and I think that's part of the reason why they're introducing this Core i9 because now that you have Ryzen on the market, you have this disconnect between the high-end Intel stuff, Ryzen, and the really high-end Intel stuff. You know, you have your i7 6800s, and then you have your Ryzen stuff, and then you have your whatever, the 2011 V3 or whatever the other uh, Intel pri uh, processors are. Those things are absolutely crazy. Now, these are supposed to kind of bridge the gap and not necessarily compete with Ryzen, but they're supposed to put something out there so you, Intel has a stake in that corner of the market. So let's talk about the 7820X versus the Ryzen 7 1800X. So the Intel has eight cores and 16 threads and has a base clock of 3.6 and a turbo of 4.3 and then a 4.5 max, uh, 28 PCIe lanes, uh, 11 megabytes of cache, 140 watt TDP, and it's about 600 bucks. Now, the Ryzen CPU, on the other hand, the 1800X, has a base clock of 3.6 and a turbo of 4.0, which is a little bit slower than the turbo of the i7. has 16 PCIe lanes, which is, again, a little bit smaller. has a 16 megabyte cache, which is huge, and only has a 95 watt TDP, which is awesome. You know, you really get to cut down your energy costs if you really want to. And uh, getting this stuff in your 500 watt power supply is absolutely great. If you can power everything with a 500 watt, that's obviously what you want. That's what you're shooting for. The standard and the real kicker for the Ryzen thing here is that it's only $500. So, for everything here, you get basically the only thing you don't get is more PCIe lanes and you have a little bit of a slower CPU. But other than that, it looks basically the same. Uh, both, like I said, both have eight cores and both have 16 threads, which is really what you're going for here. Uh, obviously, the clock speed it means a lot, but you, when you're looking at processors, the real kicker is how many cores and how many threads you have to see how much how much you can put on this little chip. So overall, I really think the price is where everything differs here. The Core i9s and the Core i7s are a lot of money. And I don't think that Ryzen has that problem. Ryzen, the, the most expensive Ryzen CPU, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't really read up on Ryzen a whole lot, but the, the most expensive Ryzen CPU is $500. It's the MSRP for the Ryzen 7 1800X, which is the best one there is. So with that one in mind, so it's 500 bucks. the one that's closest to there is the i7-6800 or 7800X, and that one is coming in at $390, and it's significantly worse. It only has six cores and 12 threads, and a base clock of 3.5, and a turbo of 4.0. It's nowhere near the level of performance that the Ryzen 7 has. Now, granted, both of these CPUs will run every game at max settings as long as it's paired with the right video card, but at the same time, how much do you really want to spend on on your brand or on your the newest and the best thing you know so how how much is the newest best and brightest worth to you how much is putting that label on your cp or pc for the next six months worth to you that's really going to get to the consumer i don't think these are going to sell very well and i don't think intel wants them to i don't think intel needs them to i think intel wants is out there to say hey we have a stake in this market too so they're not just kind of coming in blind when they have their good stuff coming in in the next two or three years when the core i x family uh kind of leaves the market and they come up with new stuff so i really do think that the core i7 6800 or 7800 x i'm sorry uh, i think that will be the one that probably sells the most because of its price point and i think especially at this level price is huge because no one wants to spend a, no one wants to spend twelve hundred dollars on a cpu but at the same time you want the best performance out of this so I don't know. We'll have to see. I do think Ryzen will perform better than these guys, but I think it's definitely interesting when Intel announces a brand new Core i9 series, which was rumored for a while. This, these guys have been kind of floating around for a while, and if you, I'll link down to the article. There are rumors of a 22-core uh, CPU in here, a 12-core CPU. I haven't really gotten into that next or yet, or at all today. Sorry, and I there's even more about other Core i9 CPUs in here too. 
um, with a lot more money going into them. So if you guys want to check that out, the link will be down in the description below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video because it was very exciting for me to make. I thoroughly enjoy reading about this new hardware stuff, and I'm very excited to see what Intel has in the upcoming months. With that, my name is Vincent Shore. If you guys liked the video, if you guys did, go ahead and go like this, like, just like, then go down the comments down and tell me why you did. And I'll see you guys in the next video.